Guys, what the heck? Who is this ripping off the PPF? What is going on? No, I'm just kidding. Look at this. Look at the skill. It's all about the technique, guys. I had someone in a truck at a gas station. While I was inside the gas station, they just swung their door open on me. But that's the beauty of the PPF. I'm gonna take the door PPF off and replace it at Precision Window Tint and Film. Shout out, Drew. All right, fam, what's good? Let's get going. It is Thursday. Welcome back to Unlockable Character. We are gonna take drive to the wash. We have quite a lot to talk about. I actually, I was at a gas station earlier today and I was inside. I could see my car from inside because I was paying. I was prepaying for my gas and I saw someone swing open their door into my driver door. Guys, someone in a truck swung their passenger door, whoever the passenger was, into my driver door and uh, it, it wasn't good. I'll tell you that. So, <laughs> uh, maybe I'll put a picture in to show you guys what it looked like. I thought that there was like paint damage. It was so bad. Like it went through the PPF and it looked like a big, just a, a big sore spot, like something hit the car. So I said, you know what? Can't deal with it right now because I had to go pick up my dog. I was getting my dog groomed. And uh, it's been a minute since I got him groomed, so I was so happy to see him. For those that don't know, I have an eight-year-old little Yorkshire Terrier mixed with a Chihuahua named Scruffy, and uh, seeing him groomed is like one of the best things for me. So while I did that and then got him home, next thing you know, I thought, you know what? Drew is always there. Drew at Precision Window Tint and Film to help me out when I need a, need a hand. So we popped over there and we both took the PPF off the door and I'm telling you when you when I'm telling you guys that you can't even see the damage like the PPF took everything and think about that a truck door like less than a foot away from your car swinging open hitting hitting your door you would think there'd be paint damage but with PPF it protected the whole whole door it protected the paint so we peeled it off it took like 15 minutes I got some video of that I'll show you guys uh, in the video, I'll mix that in, but that was crazy. Guys, so two videos ago, I think for the review, I said we would check out the recording from the drive recorder, we never did. Let's check it out while I'm, while I'm here. Okay, can you guys see that? That looks crazy. That's every single camera recording for 40 seconds. It's just going. So you have front, you have back, you have left and you have right, all going at the same time. You can export the recording to a USB. That's what that is right there. So that's pretty cool. BMW should do more with this. With the drive recorder, they should do uh, lap times that are synced to you know how long the drive recorder can run for, for laps. I think that would be pretty cool, but it doesn't do that. But anyway, I thought that was cool guys to, to check that out. And I'm so happy now because the, the door is looks brand new. We'll put new PPF on the door and the roof again later next week and uh, car will be back to pretty much as good as new. PPF is not a permanent solution so just remember guys when you drive the car hard things are gonna happen even when you just park and you do your best to park away from things things are gonna happen and you just replace the piece of PPF that gets damaged that's the best part you don't have to re PPF the whole car again so you know that's the beauty versus paint where you have to blend the paint in to match the rest of the car and usually the blending of the paint is where you can tell that something had been damaged because the blends never really really match up that well you know what I mean when you do take PPF off there may be some adhesive uh, that that is still on the door so we use some adhesive remover like Goo Gone and you just let that sit there for like a minute and then it kind of just all comes off but right now, of course, my door is exposed, so I have to be mindful of that. And just remember that, you know, until we get the car to Drew later next week, there's no PPF on the door. So we're in rear wheel drive. Burbles are off. Everything's in Sport Plus except for the suspension and the steering which are in comfort. 
adjust my mirrors a little bit. Fuck. People are retarded, retarded. spirited drive I think I, I usually chill when it comes to bikers it's not really my thing to drive aggressively with a bike everyone in Florida got out who was in the path of Hurricane Milton that was crazy guys I stayed up watching people who were storm watch like on YouTube they go live and they chase these storms crazy like what are you guys doing in downtown Tampa in the middle of a freaking hurricane you know what I mean so you're getting a sense of how it sounds inside the car guys Sounds excellent. A lot of intake noise, a lot of engine whine. Beautiful. And then outside. that high-pitched wine and it's really nice there's there's not much rasp in it even at 6,000 rpm that was third gear so we're in fourth gear now around 4,500 rpm and again you don't get that drone it's really sharp and clean <laughs> There's a brand new uh, taco and tequila place by our spot. Can't wait to check it out. We have a residence uh, kind of, residents can go check it out of my apartment before it opens to the public. And so it's gonna be a nice evening when we get back. Be a nice way to unwind after having someone, you know, open their door on your car. <laughs> and the crazy thing is they just drove away afterwards. You know what I mean? Like. They knew they did it too, but you you realize people out here they don't really give a shit, and and many of them are not very happy in their lives. So for me, it's just an inconvenience. For them, it's their way of expressing their unhappiness in their lives to do something like that. So let's
let's give it let's give it a, a little bit of gas underneath this this bridge and see what it sounds like at redline that's what I'm talking about <laughs> that sounded so good. A little bit of a rev limit reaction in third. I think uh, people drive like zombies, you know? It's like there's no awareness. They're just going about their zombified day. I feel like women drivers over the age of 40 are on some concoction of drugs. That's a sick Sao Paulo yellow M4 that went by, Dan. Six guys, gee, just screaming at six thousand RPM. See, this is the weirdest spacing on a highway. Can you look at this, guys? And just from Europe, like, imagine seeing this shit. You know what I mean? It's unbelievable. Once we're done with the wash. All right, fam. What's good? We are back at the wash. Made it, and uh, the guys here are really, really cool. So, chopped it up a little bit. Talked about AMP, which is a track here. There is a Exo Car uh, track day uh, coming up at AMP, and um, I'm gonna try and see if I can get out there. Six sessions, 20 minutes each. It's like 300, 350 bucks. So see if I can register the car and uh, wear out these tires before winter comes and let's see guys I'm feeling good with how things are going YouTube is picking up and um, I'd love to do you know Japanese wheels coilovers tune the car 
a lot is coming guys I hope you're excited the journey has only begun on this car and this is not the only car that's gonna be on this channel I reviewed a Turbo S on BBS's I'm gonna be reviewing other cars I reviewed the M4 CSL twice on the channel and I myself I'm going to acquire more cars that's just personally how I am the M4 all around great car but there's definitely a next step for me and uh, I can't wait for you guys to just see the, the growth and I hope you know every video is inspiring and, and thank you thank you really thank you to to everyone who's watching subscribing commenting liking everything sharing <laughs> I, I honestly cannot believe the the channel's growth and for me that also helps me make videos every day which is just not having expectations of how this is gonna go you know what I mean just removing myself from the outcome and just enjoying the video making process and reminding myself that it's fun you know what I mean as you do this just have fun you know this is just a car but it's it's a way to get people to you know look at the channel hear me out and that's that's the power of cars guys it brings people together and if you have something to say you know the internet now you can attract people's eyes and then really capture their their ears you know what I mean which means bring them in with their eyeballs but then have something to say and then they can actually hear you out and for me the car is a way for people to to be drawn to the content and I think if you're if you're thinking about starting a YouTube cars can be aspirational motivational people want to be in your position people want to be able to experience what it's like to have a car like this and and that's what you're able to provide and, and remind remember you know it's a privilege to be able to do this I, I at least tell myself that so it looks like traffic has built up it's gonna take an hour to get back but try and get as much good footage as possible we won't get too much just traffic footage in in the videos I try to keep it action oriented guys you know what I mean I'm, I'm an action person and a lot of the POV videos I see on YouTube, uh, I don't know, they're all over the place. There's no action, you know? It's just like a grandma driving, to be honest, for most of you guys. But hopefully you guys enjoy the car being used the way it was meant to be. Let's see if I can come around. It's unique. I don't usually ever come out at the same time someone else does. Slid out and made the light, and that was pretty sick. <laughs> I am trying to get back to that taco and tequila place opening. I think that's going to be so sick tonight. I'll give you guys a review, tell you what that place is once, once me and my girlfriend go tonight. know guys what types of food you enjoy if you'd like to see food on the channel I love trying all different kinds of foods I love Indian food Middle Eastern food Mediterranean food South American food Asian food I love all food and I like trying new things too you know I could whip up some noodles some eggs chop up a little bit of meat put it in mix it all up you know what I mean create my own like lo mein I always like adding random things into, you know, my everyday cooking. I don't know if you guys are into that, but, you know, even like fried chicken, getting like some hot honey and putting it on the fried chicken, just turning it up a notch, you know what I mean? Got a beautiful orange Mustang behind us. Mustangs are growing on me, guys. I'm not going to lie. I've always loved Mustangs and it was only the internet and YouTube, really, that started to ruin Mustangs for me when I saw how many people were crashing them. I think the Dark Horse Mustang is a, a sick, sick looking car. Fox body will always be classic. 
and I personally was really drawn to the early 2000s Mustangs starting with like I think 2003. I just thought they looked so cool when they when they changed the styling around 2003 before the retro look which was more like 2006. I think the retro look actually cheapened the look of the car. The 2003 one was futuristic and I think it just it looked premium, you know what I mean? And there was a supercharged, I think they call it the Terminator, supercharged V8 version of the Mustang back then. Man, that would have been the one I would have got. some time guys an hour to go 39 miles I don't know I think that's just way too much most of that time is the last three to five miles of entering Atlanta and that's really where the traffic's at and when people say oh Atlanta's full what they mean is we have too many cars now Atlanta didn't plan for this much population growth in such a short amount of time with the existing road capacity that, that's for sure. Oh, fifth to fourth. Fourth to third, a little bit. settings it's really a thud when you go over a big imbalance in the road I drove the car on track in the soft settings in all-wheel drive right now we're driving in rear-wheel drive with soft settings in terms of suspension and steering but next time I'm on the track I'm gonna try all-wheel drive with the stiffest settings I just think there's more driver feel a little bit more kind of confidence in the car get that massive uh, kind of thud when you go over such an imbalanced part of the road when you're on the stiffest settings you kind of just there's not as much of a kind of bounce I would say you just kind of deal with it and keep going
drive is even faster. That, that's literally the crazy thing. Let's go into all-wheel drive now. Oh my god. So smooth. It eats up all the bumps with the stiffest suspension settings. Sometimes I do try to downshift or upshift and it won't it won't give me the shift and that's the car just protecting itself. You might notice that guys. And that's me getting you know used to a car with the shift settings that it has, you know what I mean? That downshift was just insane. I'm not, I may not seem too emotional about it, but that was just crazy. That, that fourth to third was just absurd. 
Look at that, guys. We have a bunch of people in the comments saying that I'm doing some shit wrong. <laughs> no. You should have seen the way I was trying to do this, guys. I started in the middle like a dumbass. <laughs> wow. There's so much material here, guys. The door really... It's unbelievable. And it's pretty thick. That's the crazy part. You really get to see how thick this is when, when, you, when, you, when you grab it and it bunches up. Oh my gosh, there it is. Are you kidding? <laughs> That's insane.